Hey, what's up folks, and welcome back to another 3D Hangouts. My name is Noah Ruiz, I'm a designer here at Adafruits, and joining me every week is my brother Pedro. What's going on, everybody? I'm Pedro Grave Tech here at Adafruit, and every week we come to share 3D printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right, this year we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics to make inspirational projects for you folks. Thank you so much for joining us. Hope everybody's having a great, fantastic week. Let's start off with today's coupon code. It is IOTCube. If anybody wants to pick up anything in the Adafruit shop, please do so and use coupon code IOTCUBE. If you go to adafruit.com slash free, you can see all the freebies that we have, all the lovely offers. There's actually more than this photo shows. If you go head on over to the website, adafruit.com slash free, you see for orders that are 149 or more, you get a free PCB coaster, along with $99 or more, you get the Perma Proto. For orders that are 200 or more, free UPS ground shipping. For orders that are $2.99 or more, you get all that plus a Circuit Playground Express. Very awesome. Again, adafruit.com slash free. We have some cool shipping options for the folks in New York City. They have the same day delivery as an option. That's a really nice one. If you want to get your parts right away, you can get it on the same day. Circuit Python meetings happen every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Huge shout out to Katni Rambor for leading the way with CircuitPython meeting. It gets published every Monday at around 3 p.m., about an hour or so after the YouTube recording is archived. So check it out on the YouTubes. There's a playlist. There's links all over the place. And you could also, of course, join on the Discord server for 24-7 awesomeness. So check that out. And happy Discording, everybody. Comes to newsletters, we have Avery Daily. That's a daily newsletter different categories like MicroPython, CircuitPython, biohacking, 3D printing, and more. AdafruitDaily.com is the website. You gotta go over there to opt in. AdafruitDaily.com slash newsletter? That's where you're gonna find once a week fresh spanking new products from the Adafruit. So check that out. You wanna get some uh, job helps? You want some skills? Wait, you want Jobs board, <laughs> jobs.adafruit.com. You can get, uh, you can post your skills and get hired to do some awesome work by the many awesome companies that are out there. It's free to do so. So get your profile set up. And if your company looking for awesome makers, this is a great place to do so. This week's project is on the Adafruit learning system. So if you head on over to learn.adafruit.com, you can see we have a new project for you folks. This week it is an IoT cube. So this uses Adafruit IO to track some data and it uses the Huzzah ESP8266. This is a very lovely board. It's using the popular ESP8266 module. It's a low cost module that is a great way to get into IoT projects. Uh, our, our Feather version has some nice stuff like um, native USB and LiPo charging built in. And of course, it's the Feather format, so you get awesome things like the, the many uh, Feather wings, like the Adafruit Pro, uh, Prop Maker Feather Wing. This is a $10 board that gives you an accelerometer, gives you an amplifier for sound effects, RGB um, pins for RGB lights, and also a NeoPixel port, so it has NeoPixel support. Lots of goodies in that uh, Prop Maker Wing, and that's sort of the, the, the hero of, uh, of this project is the prop maker wing and of course the Huzzah with the ESP8266. Comes in different, uh, different um, kind of, we have one with the header, with no headers, with stacking headers. Get the one with no headers because uh, you want to use some short headers for this. So as you walk through the overview page, it's going to walk you through what the project does. Um, so it is meant for helping you keep track of your tasks by automating your timesheets Folks that, um, that are freelancing maybe will, will, will know that it's a bit of an issue to track your time using timesheets. It can be, there's a lot of different ways to do it, a lot of different apps. 
This is a way to kind of automate it a little bit. Instead of having to manually enter or click a button, you can just flip a cube. So the cube uh, will detect its orientation. Whether it's on uh, one or the other, it'll uh, start tracking time. It uses the NeoPixel to let you know which task is being tracked. Pretty cool. So the Adafruit I.O. is logging this data and sending it out to Zapier. Zapier is like the glue that will use Adafruit I.O. and another service like Google's spreadsheet to update a, uh, a, a row or a column inside of the Google spreadsheet so we can create new timestamps there in your Google spreadsheet. Kind of automate it. Really neat. So not a lot of parts used to build this product, uh, this project. Everything's about under 40 bucks or so. So these are all the parts you need. Uh, one bit of uh, cabling. This is the JST. We're really liking these JST connectors. Uh, this is the three pin version. Works really well with, uh, with NeoPixels. Um, and uh, get familiar with the, uh, the, the, the JST connector as we are starting to use it in all of our new products. Very cool. So here's all the parts list. Uh, uh, to do the audio, we're using a regular piezo buzzer. This is like a little inexpensive one. Um, it doesn't need uh, to be powered to the amplifier, so we actually have it soldered on top of the SW, the, the switch pin, which we'll go through in a little bit. So that's the overview page. Flip the cube, track some time. For 3D printing, um, it is a multi-part design, so you print the cube it's uh, two versions. One is a ex uh, single extruder version or a dual extrusion version. If you have a dual tool head and you want to use that, you can, you can print either or. All the panels um, are symmetrical. Most of them are symmetrical, so you want to print up to three of them. And they just snap fit into the little openings in the cube. Uh, the parts list uh, breaks down what each piece does. So one panel uh, is, is uh, meant for the NeoPixel to be secured to. Uh, the bottom panel is where the Haza is uh, mounted to, and one of the panels is a special one for the back, where there's a hole for the USB port. So they're pretty uh, self-explanatory when you look at them. The parts assembly, uh, this little animation shows how all those panels snap fit. You can print different, uh, diff you can print different panels in different colors. Uh, to kind of help you determine which, uh, which task you want to assign to whatever face. And the symmetrical, so you can rotate it. You add stickers and vinyl decals and whatnot, or dual extrude it, um, or print it on. Uh, you can print different icons on top of the panels if you want. When it comes to slicing it, um, I have a little bit here on just orienting the cube in the right orientation, so just follow that. You want to make sure the micro USB port is facing up, because that's the way it prints without supports. Uh, the CAD files are available to download through our little zip download helper here. Just click on this link and it'll download all of the files as a zip file from our GitHub repo. And if you want to design some custom stuff using the PCV boards or any of the parts that we use, we have a separate standalone GitHub repo with all of our CAD parts. It's on GitHub. There's the link to that. Wiring page has a little circuit diagram that shows you how to wire it up. Pretty simple. Just two components. The piezo is the interesting one, as it is, uh, solders right into the, uh, the, the SW pin that's right on top of the prop maker wing. It's normally for a switch, but you could also solder a piezo to it, which is nice. I did not know that. When it comes to powering the device, uh, we were going to go with the battery powered, but since it's going to be keeping track of time, we want to have it fully powered all the time, so let's, let's just use micro USB. So uh, you just plug it in through the micro USB, and uh, it stays powered there. Installing the prop maker wing, we have some tips there and using the breadboard to help you install the headers. Uh, how to install the piezo on top using a pan vise. How to install the female socket headers onto the huzzah. There's a little trick there. So you can follow that. And wiring up the NeoPixel. So we have nice photos and assembly of, uh, of wiring that up. And the, the, the feather wing just snaps on top once all the headers are, 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 are matched up and lined up properly. And then you can test the circuit by connecting directly the, the JST connector from the NeoPixel stick into the prop maker wing. And you can start testing it that way. When it comes to the assembly, we got two mounting screws for the NeoPixel stick. Uh, one funny note is the mounting holes need uh, a little bit of help there. So you can use a, um, 
If you have nylon M25 screws, maybe switch those out for some metal ones so that you can create uh, some threads. Or better yet, get a tapping screw so you can tap the holes. Because a couple of the boards need to have their mounting holes tapped in order to have the right threading. Other than that, you can use, uh, like I said, a metal screw. It's sawing the huzzah to one of these panels. Uh, it's got four standoffs, so you just kind of line them up and uh, secure them in place. Here's what it looks like with all the panels laid out. And as far as mounting the panels, they press fit. You can use your, your thumbs to press them into the various openings. I got little animated GIFs to show you, which uh, kind of the best order. You can do it in any order you want, but this is kind of the best order I found uh, to work really well. And they also snap fit. And then to remove them, you can use your fingernail or you can uh, use a spudger tool to get those panels out if you want to swap them out. Very cool, so that's assembly, pretty simple and straightforward. Comes to the Adafruit I.O. setup, we've got a nice walkthrough here in this page, shows you how to set up a new feed, how to set up your, uh, your Adafruit I.O. account, it's pretty simple. We also have a, uh, a, a Adafruit I.O. basics feed, which is like a standalone guide on how to work with different feeds and how to get data in there. But this guide will walk you through all of that. Shows you how to set up your, uh, your I.O. key, your API key, how to get that. It's a part of your Adafruit I.O. account. Zapier is a service I wasn't familiar with, but it works really well with Adafruit I.O. It lets you automate tasks, and it, uh, it's a nice API that works with a lot of different services. Kind of like If This Then That. Um, uh, let's see, it has a little note here on exceeding data. So make sure you are, it's all within the, the, free, the freebie stuff, and you can get an invite link here. Setting up your Google spreadsheet, you just create a new one, create a blank spreadsheet with uh, three rows. We walk you through, there's nice screenshots that show you exactly what to click on, where it is in the UI. So once you have your Google spreadsheet set up, once you have your feed set up for your Adafruit IO account, then you can make your zap. They call them zaps, which are little triggers uh, to get things uh, flowing in. So to get data from Adafruit IO, you just search through the little dropdown, Use that as your trigger, connect your account, make sure that uh, your IO key is set up there. And then you can uh, create an action. You want to select the Google Sheets, walk through this, alert, walk through this, um, these steps to set up your sheet. You will need to pick the spreadsheet, the worksheets. You will need to uh, select what row, what you want to create. Do you want to create a a location, you want to create a timestamp, this is where you want to create it at, is the, is the data that we're doing to create our timestamp. And then um, we are linking it to the right value field. And you just walk through this and it's all very thorough. There's a little special send test procedure inside of Zapier which works really well. And there's a nice little GIF here for turning on your Zap once you are ready to start feeding some data. Once your Zap is set up, once your Adafruit I.O. is set up, and once your Google spreadsheet is set up, then it's time to make sure your Arduino I.O. is up to date. So Arduino I.O., you're gonna need your Feather Huzzah ESP8266 board set up, installed. We have a guide on how to do that. And you, of course, you wanna install the latest libraries for the accelerometer. We're using the LIS3DH sensor library from Adafruit, of course. And uh, you make sure you wanna have that one up to date. We also have a NeoPixel library. You wanna make sure that one is up to date. And the Adafruit IO library is up to date. This code is a part of the Adafruit IO Arduino examples. So if you navigate to file, examples, Adafruit IO Arduino, you'll see that Arduino underscore 24 underscore Zapier is the code um, that has all the stuff here pertaining to this project. And there's tons of other examples uh, as well. So check those out if they uh, tickle your fancy. When it comes to Arduino network config, this is a standalone page, shows you how to, uh, where your IO and your IO key is, where you set that up, where you set up your SSID and your Wi-Fi password. So all that's set up here. And there's some other breakouts here um, for the different uh, inter, uh, Ethernet config or the phone config. You want to use the Wi-Fi config one. And when it comes to the code, uh, Brent did a great job on kind of uh, segmenting the code and breaks it down for you. So updating the timer, how to get uh, data, and how to detect orientation from the accelerometer, and how to expand on the case 
uh, the, the switch case statement. So if you want to add, let's say you want to have all six sides have different tasks, you can totally do so. The Brooks walks you through here. Uh, so for each case, we are um, doing a print to the serial console telling you what's going on. And then we update the NeoPixel. So this is where you can update the NeoPixel color per the task. The next thing is to play a sound. So we generate a tone uh, to the piezo. Uh, you, can, you can play a little sound if you want, like a little jingle. And then uh, you want to print another update to the serial command. Just follow through it. It's, it's, it's nicely commented. Um, there's a little breakdown here on how to use the serial monitor to get uh, uh, what it should look like anyway. And there's some more stuff here that you can walk through and um, how to get the data out of Zapier uh, and into and updating your uh, your Google spreadsheet, which updates every 15 minutes. Not super instantaneous, but um, it's pretty good as uh, you'll be able to get all this data after you've, you've done all your tasking. There's a nice note here on taking it further, how to expand on it. And here's the whole breakdown of the code, which is all on GitHub. Let's jump over to the uh, overhead and take a look at it. This is what it looks like. It's a little bit bigger than your hand, but it's about 68 millimeters on the X and the Y. As you flip it, it's switching between different tasks. So I have a purple set for this task. This is task number one. This is just kind of your default face facing up. And then this is task number two, which is I have a little GitHub like a little Octocat there. So you can see it changing color. Pretty good. Um, right now I have my Zapier turned off because if I keep doing this, I'll definitely reach the data limit uh, by flipping it over and over again. Um, so all I have to do is turn it on in the Zapier dashboard, which is super easy to do. We also have um, a different version over here, the single extruder version, just to show you it's a little bit simpler. It's the exact same shape, just not dual extruded. Uh, these panels can be printed in translucent fil filament or this kind of opaque filament. And uh, you can put stickers on them like I did here or have these kind of cool lithopane style, um, li lithopane style effects where you kind of print this or put a black sticker on the inside of it and then you get this really neat light effect. Um, have a, uh, a messed up thumb there. Yeah, that would have worked. I just used my phone. So yeah, that's how it's working. It's the inside of it. There's not much to it inside. There's the NeoPixel stick. It's in there. Kind of pops out like that. Very easy to disconnect it as it has a JST connector right in there. So it's super easy to install. This is running at 100% brightness. So it's pretty bright and it gets kind of warm. So there you go. And it snaps in like that. Yeah, these, these, uh, there's nubs on the side of these, on the lip of this. Can't really see it because it won't focus, but um, those little nubs here kind of snap fit into this frame. And they stay in there pretty good. So it's pretty lightweight because it's all shelled, not much infill in there. So that's pretty much the project. Check out the learn guide, of course, and we walk through it. A lot of people are Really good comments on ideas for other uh, idea, uh, ways that you can utilize this as a game. So have like NFC or magnets on each side. Try to match what the game wow, is saying. Yeah. That'd be sweet. Yeah, the, I'd, I'd love to see a Circuit Python spin on this. Cause it's easier to get audio effects, playback audio effects. Mm -hmm. yeah, cool. And then comments on the Loud Prusa printer. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> Keeps me up at night. Oh yeah, it was up all night. When was the last time you inspected the belts? This is a brand new printer. It's <laughs> yeah. like a month old. Yeah, not even. <laughs> no, it's like a month old. Yeah, super cool. So if you guys like that project, check out the video as well. It's fun putting that together. And uh, if you want to pick up any of the parts, please do so and use coupon code IOTCUBE. We have the Adafruit Feather in stock right now. Get the loose one with no headers. It's cheaper. It's a nice, low expensive feather. One of the lowest expensive, one of the lower cost, but very powerful uh, mm -hmm. feathers. The prop maker wing's only 10 bucks. It's in stock right now as well. These are just the best way to add an accelerometer, neopixels, and sound effects to your projects. 
And those, the, we got a bunch of, new, of these new cables, these JST three pin socket cables. I use these quite a bit. I would have so loved to use these on my ball drop project because I had to kind of crimp my own. So get a couple of these as they are still in stock. Check them out. Sure, you're cool. And uh, there will be some more new products hopefully later tonight. So make sure you stay tuned for tonight's Ask an Engineer. All right, we're going to jump into what are you prototyping or maybe layer by layer. Oh, let's layer do layer by layer, yeah. Yep. All right, layer by layer. I got an eight minute uh, video that I'm going to walk through. It's uh, how to design this cube inside of Fusion 360. Let's jump right into it. So inside of Fusion 360, I put together this, this cube. And uh, before I started making uh, anything, I kind of prototyped sort of playing with the, with the cube to see what kind of um, what kind of design methods are, are going to be needed to make this shape? So I started off by um, just adding a chamfer on all the edges to see how that would behave. Um, so throwing a chamfer on all the edges of the cube gives you a triangle for all the corners, which is pretty close to what we want. We wanted that hexagon shape. So to do the hexagon shape, if you apply a chamfer to just four of the edges, you end up with um, a bit of an octagon, right? So with that octagon, if you chamfer those front faces, then you kind of get the effect that I'm going for, but you can't really kind of apply that to every one of the faces. So I had to construct it kind of face by face and not just like one cube and then throw a giant uh, chamfer on it. So uh, all that shows a little bit of the, the face. It doesn't give me those corners. So getting that those uh, hexagon corners was the, the challenge. So delete that and start with a sketch-driven um, box. But uh, before that, let's go ahead and create some user parameters to make this a user uh, a parametric design. So I created a, a parameter called box, which has 50 millimeter as the value. Uh, using a center-based rectangle, I'll sketch a rectangle into the center grid and then just give it box, box for the X and the Y. And then I can create another user parameter We'll call this one corner. And I'll make it eight millimeters. This is going to be um, sort of the, the size of the corner. So I create a, a diagonal line, and it's perpendicular with the, the line that we sketched on top of. So it has a constraint. So now it has a nice 45 degree angle uh, perpendicular with, uh, with the first sketch. And then I can apply a sketch dimension using that corner, use a parameter so that it is a parametric value that we can update in that little spreadsheet. Um, and then I apply a circular pattern to that diagonal line. So I create a, co a copy of four of them on each corner, and then I can extrude the profile, add a 45 degree chamfer or, or dra uh, tamper tapered angle, and then you can get this, this kind of shape that flares out. So I have uh, the bottom constructed, and then I can create Another side profile, which will be uh, created with an offset plane using the user parameters. We'll say box divided by two plus corner, and that'll give me uh, an offset plane where it's uh, perfectly lined up with uh, the face of that cube or what will be the cube. So we basically make the same kind of rectangle that is a center based rectangle. We give it the same uh, user parameters, which is box, and then we're going to use some some sketch constraints uh, to lock this into place. So I'll use a midpoint constraint and a line, and then I'll turn it into a construction line so that I can, um, so that I won't uh, intersect with our profile. Apply that corner, um, use a parameter, and then I'll extrude it out. I'll use a uh, user parameter corner divided by two. I'll give it a flare of 45 degrees. And I actually forgot to add the diagonal line, so I got to go back in that sketch and add that diagonal line. Using the same method, I'll do the, uh, the center. Is it center? No, it's a, it's a circular pattern. So although it creates a cube, I just need to create that diagonal corner line. So I can really quick sketch that out, apply a, uh, a sketch dimension, give it that corner. Um, user parameter and then just do a circular pattern. Make sure the quantity is four, click on that center and I can create a pretty quick um, update to this, uh, this profile. So I just deselect those corners and now I have my octagon. There we go. 
Now what I'll do is I'll, all I gotta do is a circular pattern that, um, that one panel using the, the, the Z axis to repeat that as a circle. Update the quantity to four so I get all four sides. And then um, I'll create another offset plane using my, uh, my box user parameter and my corner user parameter. I can do divided by two plus corner divided by two and that'll give me half of the, uh, of the box because I have to add that corner in there. Um, but after that, I can use that as a, as a plane to do a mirror command. I just mirror that bottom plane to make a top facing plane. Now I have uh, my, my individual panels. So all that's left to do is to kind of uh, merge them. But you can, uh, you can merge them uh, using a loft command. What I'm doing right here is I'm just uh, doing a section analysis. I can cut through and do a cross section. Of, of the model and see that it is indeed hollow because we just created the, the faces. We didn't, we didn't um, fill it in yet. So I'll use a loft and I'll select the bottom floor and the top floor and that'll kind of merge all of the uh, individual shapes into one body. However, if we do a, 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 a section now, so you see that my corners need to be uh, filleted, uh, need to be lofted. And then I can apply a, uh, a pattern type, feature pattern type and then um, do a circular pattern on that so that all the corners get filled in. Look at that. So now we have a pretty solid, but our corners need to be cleaned up a little bit. So I'll sketch right on top of one of the corners, which is this triangle. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll grab the line tool and then I'll connect these, these, these vertices, these little corners to create a hexagon. So when I create this hexagon, it'll uh, close the profile and then I can select that as a, uh, as a profile. So it's selected and I can uh, hit the extrude command. I'll do uh, extent to object and then select that triangle and then I'll just create this nice clean cut on that corner. I'll hit OK to accept that. And then what I'll do is I'll do another circular pattern this time I'll select the pattern type to faces, select that face, and then just apply um, four, uh, four quantities uh, to that. And then I can just mirror those four faces to the bottom using, um, using that construction plane that we've, we built earlier. And that's pretty much it. It's a really, um, really different way to create a sort of a cube like this, but it has those, those really nice uh, chamfered edges and then hexagon. Um, corners. I don't, know, I don't know what the name of the cube is, but uh, once you have the shape, you can pretty much do anything to it. You can apply a shell. Uh, maybe you want to make a pencil holder or a planter out of this. You have complete control over all the parameters. It is parametric, so it can scale up and down. Um, and uh, that's pretty much how I created this cube. You can also, the, the shell feature is really powerful in Fusion as you can apply a shell to the whole cube and then have this frame. That's pretty much how I created the frame uh, and then just creating panels around it. Uh, but again, it's fully user parametric so I can apply uh, a bigger size to it and everything just flows with it since we, we constrained it pretty good. Um, corners can be updated as well. And because we used a little bit of math in there, um, the corner will always stay, the lengths uh, of, each, of each edge will always stay consistent. Uh, and then, um, the original source, CAD source that I have as a download contains uh, this nice assembly animation. So if anybody's curious on how to create animations, you can pick apart the animation and see how that was, was put together. Um, that's pretty much it. That's my layer by layer. I'll probably cut this out of the segment and make it a standalone thing. Um, but yeah, if anybody has any questions about it, let me know and um, I'll touch up on it. Super cool. Sweet. And of course, you can get the files for all that. Yes. In the GitHub's link in the description. Of all our videos. Yep. Posted on Twitter and everywhere the chat is. Let's go ahead and Excellent. jump into this week's, what are we prototyping? I don't know how I'm going to show off yeah. this. It's kind of big. We, yeah, maybe we do a, uh, let's see if I can even bring it over. Yeah. So, this is a blast from the past. This is Hasbro's Astrolite. Yes. This we is... just had a blog post on the Adafruit blog. Oh, we did? That was posted this morning, I believe. Oh. It has a, our video, which Andrew shot. Andrew Tingle mm -hmm. shot a nice video. And uh, we got our hands on one. 
and the task was to kind of update this, retrofit it, with, upcycle it with some new tech. So we took out the, the bulb and we put in some NeoPixel LEDs. The table is now automated. You no longer have to manually rotate it. Mm -hmm. It is automated with a, with a rotational, uh, continuous rotation servo. Of course, it's being driven by the Cricut servo inside, and there's a bunch of Circuit Playground Expresses all over to add more LEDs. Yep. So this is a construction kit that's meant to be lit up. It's, uh, these pieces are like these uh, polycarbonate tubes that are completely translucent. They do have light pipe uh, characteristics. characteristics. Yeah, they totally do have light pipes. They have a lot of uh, neat effects when it's really dark. It looks mm -hmm. amazing. So we got some shots of this uh, yesterday and um, we we're just putting together just a lot of random kind of sculptural things, more of an artsy type project. Yeah, so one of the main things that we're modeling are these quarter 20 adapters because these cases do have a little quarter 20, uh, what angle can I show this? Yeah. yeah, this one right here. There you go. Yeah, so those are, this is our new Circuit Playground Express case. It's also partly carbonate and it's completely see-through. So it works really well with the Astrolite. Uh, the Astrolite has these little holes, these little peg holes. It's very similar to, uh, to something like a light bright, but that's how the connections are made and there's these little these little uh, tubes that have the little press fit to them. So we made these little tubes, um, designed them and 3D printed them. And they, uh, they work with our, uh, our Circuit Playground Express case. And all and of our these, camera bits. Yeah, and all of the camera bits. So it's a really great way to mount things. It's always add a quarter 20 screw insert to everything. Take a look at it in more detail next week, but super simple beauty project, I guess. What we would call this uh, retro restoration of adding new components in there. That's right. Here's the, the booklet from the 1969. This thing is 1969. Look at this. Amazing. Can't believe it survived. Yeah. So here's the back of it. Magic light, astral light, color writer. Oh, wow. They, they tried hey, a bunch. Light yeah. bright. Light bright. They made that too. So uh, in the booklet, it shows you how to, uh, sh it shows you all the, these are probably all hand drawn. Mm -hmm. um, these are really nice. You can see how the connector bits are there and um, all the different parts and things. And uh, you even have some plans on how to put together some of these things, which is really neat. This is a star, very cool. Yeah, when we were in the office two weeks ago, it looks like they had some really cool designs going up. Um, yeah, they, they did the robot one. It. Yeah, they did the robot one. Yeah, all, all the things are saying, whoa, I thought it was Mousetrap. It totally <laughs> looks like Mousetrap. It is like Mousetrap. This is way before Mousetrap. Yeah, some of the other components that we printed for this were just like um, these like little cylinder, or these uh, the domes? spherical domes. Yeah. Um, some of them were broken in this kit, so we oh, went they ahead were. and reprinted these. Others, uh, completely new shapes, like of course the Adafruit logo, we had to print that. It's compatible with the little pegs. Mm -hmm. And you made one as well, Noe. I think it was this guy right here? Yeah, it's the Circuit Playground Express mount with the uh, things in it. Mm -hmm. With the things in it, with those little holes in it. <laughs> so we're still working on it, we're still playing around with it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think really that's the, the best thing you can do with it, is to automate it and replace the so. lighting. Just new lights in it. Yeah. Rip out the light this bulb. This is massive. Like the, the tooling on this must have been pretty. Yeah, pretty it makes huge. a great this case massive, though. Super cool. Massive base. Yeah. All right. We'll take a look at this next week. But that's what we're working with. Yeah. We're, we're cool. We'll take a look cool on the stuff inside with the, with the CN, mm -hmm. which we'll talk about later. Well, that's what we got. Um, let's go ahead and jump into Community Makes this week's time lapse Tuesday is a toothpick dispenser. This is a multi-part design that uh, you can assemble. Yep, it's a two-piece. Uh, no, actually it's three-piece. Yep, three-piece design. A lid that goes right on top of there. And it's surprisingly effective. Yeah, you it just works push well. uh, up on the surrounding uh, piece around it, and you push down, and it'll almost always grab a little toothpick. Yeah. This was a design that we found on Cults 3D. Yeah, super cool. So you can check that out. Design, useful. Funny toothpick dispenser. <laughs> By Shushi. All right. Shushli. Here it is. Let's see if it'll work. How many uh, toothpicks can you fit? I did not count. Hey, look. Hey, it works. works. Cool. Excellent. Here's the overhead. <laughs> you gotta eat lunch first. Yeah, right. 
Ah, that's gone. So go. if we take off the lid, you can see yeah, how that's there, working. There what happens is there's like a, um, what's it called? Like a little... So uh, it, it like pushes a, down. Exactly, yeah. There's like a little ramp that's the, going down that these all get handed it. on. Yeah. And then this little uh, lid will straighten it out. It's a pretty cool little design. Yeah. Definitely uh, begging to be automated. Maybe have like the, um, mm. the rack and pinion, just have it go up and down. Linear actuator, yeah. Linear actuator for that. Cool. Pretty cool. Yeah, neat little mechanism. Mm -hmm. Very simple. Oh, I like that. It works nice all the time. Motion. Super cool. Yeah. Good tolerances on this design. Yeah, check it Definitely out. Definitely check it out. It's a free download over on Colts 3D. Colts 3D. Excellent. All right. Should have printed this in Woodfill, huh? Yeah. That would have been cool. <laughs> all right, we got some more community makes. These are some designs that folks uh, share. Projects of Mars and beyond. Where is that link? There it is. First one is the Highland Shield. Posted up by Snake Sandwich. This was the design we put together a while ago. And it's a, a two-piece thing that you can print in halves on a big printer or a small printer, and you can scale it up, scale it down. It's uh, the Highland Shield from The Legend of Zelda. This looks great. It's I can't so even amazing. see the seam on it. Yeah, it looks great. It's got the Sheikah slate oh, right on there, too, so cool. hidden in the back. The Guardian Shields! Oh my goodness. Yay. I think this is one of the first makes of it. That's about uh, the second or third. Mac Knight. Think of Caesar Mac Knight posted this. Has an instructable nice. on how he how he set up his volcano tool head with a 0.8 nozzle. Oh. Works out really well. And he's using a UV strip and some single red LEDs that he has laying around. Very cool. Prints it on a core bot. Speaking of Zelda, here is the uh, the Guardian Sword printed by the same person, uh, Mac Knight printed this. Very cool. Same volcano tool head with the 0.8 nozzle and 0.6 layer height. Very nice. Get that print in a couple hours. And here is the wall mount for the shield and the sword. That is awesome. So nice, very nice uh, design mount, wall mount for the shield. We'll have to print this ourselves because we got to put this on our wall too. Very cool. Thank you for sharing that with us, Mac Knight. Pretty short this week, but those are uh, some of the community makes this week that we, sh we thought we'd share with you folks. If you'd like to share any with us, you can hit us up on any of the social channels or email directly, support at adafruit.com. Don't forget this week's coupon code, today's coupon code rather, is IOTCUBE. So if you want to pick up anything in your shop, please do so and use coupon code IOTCUBE. Everything is in stock right now, so check it out. All right, well, that's going to be it for the show, but don't fret. There is more shows happening later tonight. Later tonight, the Ask, in, uh, Ask Seen on Show & Tell, or just call it the Show & Tell. Every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time will be there. Folks from the community will be there. If you want to share your project with the world, please do so and say hello. And then uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern Time today, Ask Engineer with Lamar & Phil. You get a full hour of Lamar & Phil. New products, open source hardware, and more. Tomorrow is Thursday, John Park Workshop. John Park's workshop is on every Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Check it out. Get some live builds, make code minutes, and more. Also a coupon code as well. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you guys so much again. Don't forget, your orders do make a difference. We thank you so much, and don't forget, the coupon code happens every week. IoT, IoT Cube, get 10% yeah. off your order. Start building your IoT projects. So we're going to want to build. Stock up on those feathers. That's going to be it from us. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to follow us on all the socials. You can see some of the behind the scenes stuff that we've been working on. We've been doing a lot of cleanup. Oh my gosh. Take a look at that. Mm -hmm. I think one more, more week of the shelves. Get used uh, to if this you've been background. with us for a while, that Everybody might be used to seeing. It's gonna go down, get rid of the shelves, and go with just regular desks now so we can actually store all the spools inside of them. Yep. Kind of see all that mess back there. You're getting rid of those. Yep, and stay tuned for tonight. We have a new background for the show and tell. Yeah, new we did background. a lot of cleaning. We got a new project shelves. And if you want to close out the show with it, I think I put the clip of what our new component drawers look like. Oh yeah? It might be cool for people to see if you haven't gotten a chance to see it. All right, let me see if I can update it. 
just a cool way of organizing all your stuff with shelves instead of the little plastic bins since a lot of the boards don't fit in there. Yep. It's in the uh, 10 and 7 this one? Yeah. It's called and I just want to mention that one of the things that kicked this off is all the new boards that we've been releasing. Uh, it's time to say goodbye to all the 8-bit boards. Um, yep. All the Unos, the Leonardos. The minis. Oh, it's your uh, in and out point, I think. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so I got rid of all of the old boards we're never going to use again. Like all of the, um, you know, sort of the ones that were uh, sort of put into rest, like the Floras, the, the Trinkets, the non M Zeros. Yeah, we, we the really need old circuit Python on, on the hardware, so. Any hardware that doesn't have circuit, that can't run circuit Python it's is not out. hardware that we're probably going to use. So. Yeah. So, so many new products in the pipeline. It makes sense to get rid of the ones we're not going to use so much anymore. Um, yeah. So Halloweens, battery cases, all the lipos, motors, alligator clips, jumpers. What else we have here? All the batteries, all the blingy stuff, all the feathers their own drawer, all the Raspberry Pis, which we're starting to batteries. get lower on, right? In terms more of projects, more lipos, dangerous drones. And on your side, we have all of the JST connectors, all different types. We have resistors, resistors multimeters, heat shrinks, standoffs, stickers, magnets, there's uh, cases, zip ties and whatnot, buttons, uh, USB, Headers, rings, pixel rings, rings, rings pixel, Charlie, Charlie Plexes, Plexes, LEDs, regular LEDs, thread, conductive thread, fabric, let's see, knobs, uh, rotary encoders, yep, push yep. buttons, Potential more pushes, numbers, bigger more push buttons, buttons, arcade buttons, the the L wire, L wire, which we have room for more, all of our screws, hardware, screws, 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 those are three layers of screws there. Yep. There and are some uh, random, random sort projects. of boxes and things. There's a lot to it. There's more. We'll do another one once we complete the 3D printing area, but. Yeah. I had to more Condi this whole house. <laughs> more Mary Condi? Tidy up. Tidy up the whole house. So that's it. Again, tonight we'll have a new background. So yes. check that out. It's going to be fun. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Don't forget. Coupon code is IOT, and we'll see you guys later tonight. That's going to be it from us, but until next time, don't forget to make a great day. See you tonight, next week, guys. Bye, folks.